joining me again. Thanks, I keep uh, I keep wanting to record these conversations because I feel like good things come out when we think out loud together. And yeah, appreciate you and your your role in our church is I don't know, kind of like our official slash unofficial women's ministry leader. I know you. <laughs> No, very unofficial title. Yeah, i'm not into but, formality yeah i'm not either just the other day someone on facebook reached out someone i haven't talked to in years and they were saying i don't know what to call you bro or pastor I'm like please you know i'm not 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 big on the formality stuff that's right i'm with you that's right i'm with you anyways tracy appreciate you and uh thank you taking a lot of these things and so here's we were talking a little bit before i press record here uh we're gonna just spend a little time talking about the elephant in the room everyone's thinking about the the protests the riots yeah the looting all that's going on right now it's it's as you said earlier it's basically eclipsed the coronavirus now it's like yeah. no one's even talking about covid-19 anymore now it's all this nope. so let's just address the elephant in the room say a little bit about it because it is a good illustration of human nature and yeah. helps us appreciate our need for our creator yeah, our good God and our Savior, and so let's just talk yeah. a little bit about that, and then, and then later in the conversation, we'll touch on what we wanted to originally talk about, which was the topic of sanctification in Romans six. So, okay, um, okay. So you said earlier, and let's let's just elaborate on this. You said this situation with the the rioting, the looting, the violence that's taking place in response to, or or allegedly in response to what happened with George Floyd, that tragedy. That yeah. this has weighed on you more heavily than the pandemic has. So why yeah. why is that? Well, partly the way I'm wired, like when it came to the the virus, we're all united together and everybody's yeah. working together to hunker down and do what needs to be done to, you know, initially it was to help the medical field, right? To help the hospitals Flatten and the, the doctors curve. to get Yep. to get their stuff together so we didn't become like another Italy. Right. And so that to me is like, yep, God is sovereign over this. We're all a team. You know, this is what we all are doing together. We're, you know, we're all in the same ship. Um, but then when, I think last weekend, when the news of the monuments in uh, DC were being vandalized, I think that's when it hit me the hardest um, and so then this is now the opposite of where I always knew we were divided as a country in recent times, but the, the level of violence and then the amount of justification and even kind of moral support behind it really saddens me and, and saddens me kind of for the same reason, but on the because we're not united together behind, we are common, we're Americans. Now it's like, no, everything about us is bad. Our history is bad. The past is bad. Even everything we're doing right now is bad. Um, and it's, and it's, and then everybody's painted with this broad stroke of, um, so what that policeman did, it, what he did it because he was white and that man is is black. Right. And what I was telling you before we hit record, the part that grieves me about that situation was he was a mean person who had no regard for another person. And, and in his bitterness and anger and power trip, he killed him. Yeah. And it's so to me, it's a human dignity thing and, and less about, I don't know. So anyway, then the division and the animosity and um that that is what i'm i'm it's depressing to me and yeah. um and knowing it's human nature is depressing <laughs> yeah and sad yep sad along I, I like you i'm probably wired similarly in some ways so yeah this is i don't know if it's weighed more heavily on me I, i'd have to think through it but it's definitely weighing heavily on me um and like you just seeing the the violence yeah it's it's horrible to see and who knows who knows what the all the motives were behind why that police officer did what he did i don't know right. and i'm not right. there's no excuse for it obviously but I'm, i was trying to think through 
and it's all speculation and that's what we you know we love to do this we love to speculate right. regarding the motives of other people that's one of our human instincts but I was trying to figure well what what, what could possibly motivate him and I thought well maybe it's because he felt like there was resistance. And you know, when your kids are resisting your authority and you're frustrated and you're in a volatile situation and sometimes you double down on your aggression trying to get make your point or trying to resolve yeah. the situation. Then when he's being filmed and there are people around him criticizing what he's doing, some personalities might be apt to cave to that and say, well, I better, and others are gonna double down and say, how yeah. dare you question my methods? And now I'm even more determined that maybe his yeah. ego was hurt. I mean, who knows? There's so many possibilities as to what yeah. was going on inside of him. Yeah. Only God knows, right? But you have yeah. one, you know, one fallen human being doing something that's so clearly atrocious to another human being. And and hey, was skin color a factor maybe i i maybe read for recently him, that yeah. those guys may have known each other they may have worked they were both worked at the same i don't know if you saw that but they both uh -huh. worked at the same i want to say it was a club they were both bouncers at the same club oh maybe different gosh. times maybe overlap so there could have been history there who i mean who knows yeah but it's a horrible thing we can we all agree on that yeah right? yeah and so some of the i what i struggle with and what i wanted i wish there was a way to communicate about this that would just level the playing field and how, yeah. kind of where we could all just say, Hey, look, even something like racism, we talk about it as if it's this thing, this evil, dark, insidious thing that appears in certain people at certain times. And it's like, look, we're all predisposed to preferring people like us, whether it's skin yeah. color, socioeconomic level, a sports team that we like. There's a gazillion ways that we humans divide over things. Yeah. And we shouldn't be surprised that race, yeah, it's an issue. And it's always going to be an issue to some extent. And it's not just one direction either. Mm -hmm. So that's exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. And the I think the other part too, even regardless of what his motives were, I mean, if anything is alarming about that situation is he had a long rap sheet, you know, he yeah. had many complaints against him, then yeah. he shouldn't have been yeah. allowed to be in that position in yeah. on the police force. Um, yeah. um, but but for people to be freaking out and and now blaming other people outside of that immediate circle and and make this about a particular politician or that we're all yep. um, racist. But like you said, we all have a bias towards things and people and um and interestingly i think in a way this may even kind of morph into our sanctification conversation but i mean someday the earth will be free from that yeah. bias because really i think that bias comes from what's built into each one of us is self-protection right and and i keep telling um I'm talking about this in our ladies Bible study that even the animals and I'm looking out this way because I can see my field out there and we have deer and coyotes and hawks and mice and where there's all kinds of the circle of life happening right out that window. But animals are in self protection mode and they have to fight for survival fight. and yep. so that you know, that's the part that's sad to me. And yet then amazing that God is sympathetic towards that has given us help. Um, if nothing else, mental help right now, meaning a, a mind to know this will not last forever. And we will get to be in his presence at some point, but then that the new earth will be free. Everything will be free from this, um, corruption that we're all subjected to, you know, animals, plant life, and all definitely, of it. Definitely human beings, right? That, yep, that kind of is interesting. I, I've been thinking back on a video. I posted like a three minute video on Monday. I was in a dark place having read different articles and watched videos on this topic, struggling. And I just found myself reading the text in Isaiah 9 about Jesus being the Prince of Peace. Mm -hmm. So I shared this three minute video talking about how we as humans, we get stirred up with all this turmoil within, you know, with our greed and our jealousy and our anger and our contempt for other people. 
and how we all are plagued with that stuff and how God has mercy on us and Christ yeah. is the Prince of Peace. And as you were saying, one day he'll come back and he will put an end to all this. And I talked about how, you know, there's no hope in any human governor or, or social yeah. justice warrior. And so I had the thought, I shared it. And then I afterwards, as usual, I'm, I'm sort of thinking back on it and I'm thinking, gosh, I, if I put myself in the shoes of someone else watching that and listening, they could easily say, ah, it's, okay, nice pie in the sky stuff, man. But like, what about like, we still have decisions to make. We still have a problem to try to navigate through. And it almost seems like a cop out, right? An escape. Yeah. But, and I get, I totally get it. Cause I'm thankful for the people, whether it's the leaders in the law enforcement realm or the political realm, or even people who are leading this, this, these demonstrations, like the, there, there are roles and responsibilities to engage in. But I think from a faith perspective, we're saying, look, you know, like pause, like think about what's yeah. happening. Think about the complexity yeah. of this. Think about every individual. So last night and all these nights for now, I don't know how long, over a week maybe, but all yeah. these, right, like all these individuals, every heart is unique and different. And every person is churning with a form of turmoil, a, a yeah. anger, a resentment, a frustration, uh, a contempt. And that's both, that's on both sides of the protesting line, the, the, the side of law enforcement, the police officers, the National Guard members, each individual unique person struggling through it. And then you've got these, these people who are part of the, the protests and then the, the, the unruly protesters, the, the rioting, every individual is very complex. And so yeah. why, while it may seem like this cop out to me, if you can look at the complexity of it and see you know, as you alluded to earlier, like the, the broken creatures of this world, including human beings, and to hear there's a God who has mercy, who, who is the Prince of Peace, who understands better than we understand why we get stuck where we get stuck, and who's made provision for our forgiveness. And he's given us this hope that, hey, one day this is all over because I'm going to reign supreme and everyone's going to see my value and and the fighting for the fight or flight all that stuff can be gone because you just i'll be your provider and it will be clear to you that you have everything you need you don't need i mean so much of this yeah. is driven by greed and jealousy and and people protecting their stuff and people trying to get there it's like it's wow i mean and and that's just human and we can't just extract ourselves from it no or or flip a switch and make that stop or flip some super supposedly super spiritual switch and just say well i'm going to be godly about no it's just we're all human beings and we can all we can't anymore. yeah we cannot escape it and and no. and i think by design i think that really hit me when so as we were kind of marching through chapter six seven and eight of romans and we've I was even looking at my notes. We've actually been swimming in that for two years now um, oh. in different parts and pieces. But yeah, right. as we were looking at the resurrection, again, looking at the natural body versus the earthly body. Um, but in there, in Corinthians, it talks about how each thing has its own glory. And that was a goodness. And so it kind of, it, it hit me that even us right now in God's eyes, where we are stuck at, this is good. It's not like we're vile and disgusting and we're garbage. You know, all those things that I used to hear in the reformed thinking of I'm a worm, mm -hmm. I'm just nasty. And, but it's, it's in a sense in this earthly system, even that fight and flight that we keep talking about, that is, that's a good thing. It has its purpose. But, but um, anyway, in the Corinthians, it's talking about, um, but we will have the new body like Christ and then the earth. And now I'm combining this back with Romans 8, even all of creation will be um, uh, um, no longer subjected to this corruption. So right now it is good because it has its purpose. Even the animals need to have that fight or flight or we would all be devouring each other immediately, you know, life wouldn't be able to go on. And so um, I think when we get in his presence, uh, we're going to then fully know him. And I think that's part of our problem. And that's where I keep saying we can't really help right now, 
especially non-believers, we're kind of stuck in this twisted, warped thinking about who God is. Right. Um, and, and then you're going to uh, do what is natural when you can't yeah. see it any differently, right? No. And that helps if you can understand that, if you can take a step back, understand that somewhat objectively, it might help generate a little bit of compassion. And that's what yeah. everyone's calling for is understanding and compassion, right? And so maybe yeah. it can help with that. But yeah. I want to, can, let me, let me ask you, well, go ahead. Do you yeah. guys say something else? I don't want to cut you well, off. No, I, I was just going to say one thing I do want to be careful of though, is because like, because again, in my old way of thinking, my I, older, my thinking is always changing. So I don't want to say I have old and now I'm new and I've arrived. I'm always right. processing this True. stuff. Yeah. But I used to think that there would be a faith response to things. There would be a godly response to things. And then as we delved into grace, I would say, oh, well, grace means I just hold back. I just stay quiet. I just right. accept God is sovereign. And now I'm, I'm like, that is all true. But practically now there's yeah. things we can do or don't. Like Donnie did on Sunday. Here, here's a petition. If you agree right. with it, sign it. If you don't agree with it, sign that one. But it's okay to do stuff. And it's okay to be, to do practical things. Um, it doesn't mean now you're not trusting God. So anyway, I just wanted to throw that in there right. because. Because we try to almost over-spiritualize sometimes, yes. right? Or yes. yeah, create this odd category, which we've talked yeah. about something as in Christendom. Like there's this thinking that you're just going to be able to, get have this godly response and then look yeah. that's look it, it's like oh i should be careful but i'm gonna be it's okay <laughs> watching this video tonight where a local african-american pastor prominent pastor is going to have a discussion with the former chief of police of the city of olympia and a couple different pastors in the area are going to be hosting this and trying to trying to move forward this conversation about racism in the gospel. And, and I don't know what it's going to cover, but I know other things I've seen and articles I've mm -hmm. read so far. I don't know. There's like this thing, like if we can just really get this perspective of Jesus, then we can kind of resolve this or at least move in the direction of resolution. And, and I'm not saying to your point, I'm not saying there aren't things we can do. Like there are things we can do and there are conversations to have that can be beneficial, but I think sometimes we underestimate the depth and complexity of the problem yeah. and we, we maybe overestimate our role or our yeah. ability to, if we can just kind of use the right language and lean into our super spiritual compassionate side, we can resolve this. And I would say, well, okay, to a degree, maybe, but think about when you coexist with your own family and you love these people more than anybody, and yet there's conflict and there's disagreement and there's struggle yeah. because they're different from you are in subtle ways. These people, your kids and your spouse, I mean, these people are most like you, you pick your spouse and then you, you know, these kids are genetically, you know, they're like you and they're like, yeah. you. Know, but still there's conflict. Like it's just, it's human it's human nature, it's human experience, yeah. and, and we wait till the day when, uh, as it says in First John, we will be like him because we see him as yes. he is. So, so I think just rooting, I don't know, it's helpful for me at least to, to think along those lines a little bit, in my mind, a, a, a little bit, it's a little bit more clear. Um, and I, but I want to I wanna sort of like ask you a, a question, maybe you can clarify, because this is okay. for... And I want you to elaborate on this, but saying, yeah. well, there was a time when as someone in the reformed camp, I would have thought, okay, humankind depraved and ugly worms and worthless yeah. And, yeah. and so on. And so you're saying, okay, I don't see it that way anymore. And, and I don't either like that. We're created, we are created. Um, we're fearfully and wonderfully made, right? We're yeah. good creatures. Now, you know, there's fallenness and there's an ugliness to that. So, so I guess that's where the counterbalance would say, when you look at, for example, I don't know if you saw this, I think it was an older couple, small business owners, maybe New York somewhere. They went to try to stand in front of their store yeah. and a group of rioters came up and this older couple is just standing their ground, standing in their way. And at one point, the the little mob of 
pe the young people starts to walk away, well, then one comes back and just starts wailing on the older lady. She's probably yeah. in the 50s, 60s, and he just starts yeah. beating the tar out of her, okay? Yeah. Well, then the husband starts to try to get involved, and this other guy comes up, and he's literally swinging a, like a two-by-six at mm -hmm. the husband, at the wife. The one guy's holding and, and sort of wrestling with the older woman, and this other guy is beating her with this board. Yeah. Hey, that's pretty nasty. Like, that's yeah. not just like, I don't know what words we could use. Well, it's not healthy or it's not, that's, pr I mean, it's really atrocious. It's brutal. Right? Brutal. It's brutal. And, and what happened to your illustration earlier, what that officer did kneeling on George Floyd's neck yeah. for minute yeah. after minute after minute, like an eternity, yeah. it seems like yeah. when you're watching yeah. it. Yeah. That's not a small deal. So, how, so yeah. help me understand. What do you mean when you say, yeah. well, we're not worms, we're not. Because like, we would say, I think we're all capable of the worst things, right? Yeah. So, and I'm really thankful that you're asking me to clarify that one so I can even think it through because <laughs> I'm communicating it in the future and even thinking about what do I mean by that. And as you were describing those situations, so first and foremost, I think when I first said that we're not vile worms. I am thinking about how God views us, all people. And I don't mean he views us as these cute little angels and he looks at those guys with the bats in their hand as, as evil. Um, I really do believe God looks at all of his creation with tenderness. And <clears throat> so first I'm speaking from what I believe is God's view of us. Mm -hmm. And we're, and I'm thinking of what is man that thou art mindful. Um, I think about how, um, well, so I think that God is viewing us with a tender, compassionate heart, because just like when we, see a human being, especially as parents, maybe not all of our children, but when you see somebody acting out in their pain and they're kicking and screaming, you, if you're really close, yes, you're going to have a, you want to react in kind and get really irritated. But for the most part, it's like you're broken for them because you realize they are in so much pain that they are hurting others. Mm -hmm. And I believe that is how God is looking at us. Yeah. Um, the fact that he even so loved the world that he is giving us Christ. Yeah. And then as the natural next question should be, so what does that mean? And what does that look like? Because we're all still beating on each other where there's right. still wars and all of that. So first and foremost, when I say we're not vile worms, I am meaning from God's perspective. Therefore, I don't need to look at myself as a vile worm. And I wouldn't encourage you, Jeff, to go, oh, I'm a dirty, rotten sinner. Like, I just think that kind of talk isn't helpful. I don't think it really fits to what God is communicating to us. But back then, so on a practical level, as we're dealing with each other, I have no problem saying that is brutal. So, so as I pull back, the person with those bats and balls and whatever they're doing to people, I, I believe deep down, now this is just from a spiritual perspective, not that I'm gonna say, so be nice to that guy. I'm saying that, that violence is coming from somewhere. Yep. And it's usually from being deeply hurt way back at the very beginning. And their only recourse is to learn to inflict pain outwardly. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, um, so, so what I am not saying, back to what I said a minute ago, I, so now I'm not going to say, now we just need to be godly and show grace and just be nice to those guys. No, they need to be held to the extent of the law. They need to, um, they, they need to have consequences to their crimes because one, they're breaking laws and just they have a lack of respect and there's no human dignity. And I realize it wasn't shown to them, but it doesn't make it okay. Therefore now it's okay for you to not show it to somebody else. Right. Um, so in a huge nutshell, 
that's how I would answer that. Yeah, right. No, I understand that. And it's not to say that when God looks at these atrocious actions taking place that he's not affected. He, I believe, we believe he's grieved by the things that take place. Yeah. But he also is grieved with a level of understanding that we just have a fraction, a small fraction of yeah. his understanding of the complexity of a heart in turmoil, a heart yeah. that is fighting to survive, a heart that yeah. is is fighting to sustain itself and rescue itself and please itself and prove itself. He yeah. sees all that and has compassion. Yeah. And, and then you see Jesus, and I think that's where these words come from. When he's hanging on the cross, having himself been victimized, the only innocent man to ever live, having yeah. himself been victimized in the most egregious of ways, and he says, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. I think yeah. that's where that comes from. He I sees that complexity. He sees that, okay, in one sense, these people may know what they're doing, but in another very real and deep sense, they don't know what they're doing. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and a lot of factors, just for fun, I'll throw in there, because yeah. I, have, I have friends and relatives who are in law enforcement, and I have other friends and relatives who are thinking more along the lines of the progressive left in something like this. So I have people on the whole spectrum. Yeah. And, and I think it's worth noting that who we are, to include our skin color, to include our socioeconomic status, has to some degree, skin color for sure, but the other things to some degree been determined by forces outside of our control completely. No. Right? I mean, I didn't have any decision to make in what family I was born into, exactly. where I was born, and when I was born. And that too can be, in my mind, an equalizing truth when we think of, okay, look, I could easily be someone who's born in the inner city with no, no father present. And all, yeah. those are all difficult things to go through. And that's what we would say, hey, look, and, and God looking down on humanity sees us and, and treasures and values his creatures and is grieved by the destruction we bring yeah. into our lives and the lives of others and has mercy and compassion. And the cross is about him conveying to us his forgiveness, right? Yes. And the healing that we need. Now that well, begs the question. Way, well, go ahead. I was just going to say, but even when God looks down and like in the Exodus, he's going to come down and dwell amongst us. And Christ was the actual fulfillment of that. Christ came and lived all this stuff that you just explained, right? He, he lived a life of being uh, mistreated if you want i mean whatever we do to each other as human beings we don't respect each other we don't we if it means if i'm in pain or hurt which then becomes anger and you're in my way it's you're going to feel the effects of it you're, right yeah, directly right. or indirectly you're expendable yep. yes yep. and christ willingly came and dwelt in that environment for us. So if nothing else, again, it is God, the unseen God becoming seen in Christ to see the heart of God. And even when you just said that, thinking about Jesus wept, yeah. he even weeps. So, I mean, if we feel soft in our heart and grieved or sad about these circumstances or, you know, something, I'd say globally, you know, what's going on in our, com in our country, mm -hmm. I mean, God's heart is way bigger than mine. So that came from somewhere. That's not just me having a soft heart of my own accord, right? That is that is just a tiny bit of what God is actually feeling for us. And we see that in Christ is, right. is kind of my, yeah, my point. Absolutely. And in magnificent ways.